<laughs> Does that give you the energy to direct, Jeff? Let's shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Mud's been uh, a long time in the making. I first started thinking about this uh, back when I was in college. I was walking around the Little Rock Public Library and I found a book all about uh, people making a living off the river. And I thought, okay, well that needs to be in a film. Jeff is one of the more extraordinary talents, I think, out there working today. Action! What drew me to the project was Jeff as the director. Of course, the script was amazing. I could really capture the scenes by just reading. It wasn't, you know, it was no brainer. Like two seconds later, I was in. I remember after reading the script because it hit me emotionally, and I thought, my God, I haven't seen anything like this in a long time. It's one of the best scripts I've ever read. I tried to never sleep in the same place twice. What you got there? I brought you some food. And not, the scripts really aren't like that. Scripts that get made by good directors and good actors aren't even always like that. It didn't need rewrites. It didn't need me to embellish things. The writing's really good. The identity of Mud is really, really strong. When I first read it, someone had told me it was like kind of like a slight similarities to a Huckleberry Finn, which is one of my favorite books growing up. And the fantasy of it all, how someone in love could really put their selves at risk Stand right here. Matt, over here. So we can do a frame this shot up, please. I feel very comfortable working with Jeff, and, and I feel like he's a genius, and I, I, I really feel like he knows what he's doing. But we need to wrap his head up, huh? It's going to suck. Jeff is a very thoughtful writer. He plots carefully. His work is deep and rich in character and nuance. And so first glance, you read a lovely, satisfying adventure story. And then as you read it again and again and you live with it, it just goes deeper and deeper. That was great, guys. You hear that? It's my horn. Ellis is the main point of view character. He's in every scene. I mean, it's a little cheesy to say, but Ellis just came from a series of just high school heartbreaks. I'm a big believer that love when you're a teenager is probably more fierce than it ever will be in the rest of your life. That doesn't mean it's it's deeper or, or more sincere. It just means it's more intense. I'll see you tomorrow. You can love harder. You can hate harder. You can hit harder. You can get hurt harder. You can be happier. <laughs> um, all the human emotions you have a little more uh, ceiling and floor to them. That really, for me, is what I wanted Ellis to be like. I just kind of had faith in the idea that I would find somewhere in the woods of some town there are two boys that are going to play these parts. And luckily, that was true. First day of filming. Of course, we had gone through a very extensive casting process on the Tree of Life for the three boys, so I had them in mind, and they came to do some work to prepare for the release of Tree. And then I remember they walked in and I looked at Ty and I was like, he's a, he's a thinker, he's an observer, he's smart, he's a natural from this part of the world. Oh my God, he's perfect now. Good. Let's do one more for safety. Four years of film school. Ty had gone through something that is invaluable, which is this insane Terrence Malick improv boot camp. Oh, be good, man. So I met Jeff, and they sent me the script, and I read it, and I told him I was interested in So I want him to be turning, and you to be throwing a punch almost at the same time. Does that make sense? He's the greatest kid. He's just, um, I think, an incredible raw talent. As soon as I said, okay, uh, just start playing around in that scene. Uh, you're looking around a boat that's in a tree. Um, without missing a beat, Ty just begins just making up lines and he starts walking around he's like look up there that's where it came down and he starts like looking through stuff and he's like hey look at this and so I had this kid who had all this experience being on a uh, on a film set but he didn't have maybe the hang-ups that a lot of child actors that you encounter have. Who else knows about this? Just me and Gail. What's he think? He don't care about it. Good. This boat's ours. Cut. That's the best one, guys. It's great. It's beautiful. Ow! 
Hand, quit. Hand? No, stay hand. Meanwhile, we were looking for neck bone in all the same places. Los Angeles, New York, Texas. But our Arkansas casting director, Sarah Tackett, put out a press release saying, let's find neck bone in Arkansas. And I believe it was Jacob's mom who saw that press release and put it in front of Jacob, who put himself on tape and sent it in. And I remember, get, remember getting a text from Jeff minutes later saying, you know, holy cow, have you seen the first guy on the tape? Action. And he's got this amazing natural Arkansas accent. And talking about his hobbies, fishing and hunting, riding dirt bikes. And how do you change the gears? Your feet or your hands? Do you know how to your feet on the other side instead of a peg or something? Do you know how to you use the standard form? hit it down or do you hit it up? Hit it down for first, up for second, third, Four. and fifth. He acts like him. Now, can he perform this character? It'll take twice as long going up river. Dad's gonna kick our ass. And that's been, for me, the most amazing part of working with Ty and Jacob is that they ingest this material and it comes out and it's natural. Y'all stay out of here. Come on, man. Come on. There's no better discovery than we had with Jacob. We found the right kids for these roles. When did you find out that you got in the part? Like four weeks later after you made me wait, like four days. <laughs> and uh, how did you feel then? Great. He's the real deal. He brings a lot of humor to the movie because he's just so authentic and country. Cut. Hey, Mick, this thing's only got one start in it. You know that? I mean, you can't manufacture these kind of kids in Hollywood. You know, they're true southern rural boys, you know, that hunt and fish and drive boats. Welcome to the ball. Ty is someone who uh, you can tell he's had some experience under his belt. He understands what's going on, what you need to do. <laughs> Did you get my phone calls? What? I've been trying to call you. Who's this what guy? You? Chad, I'm a card kid. Ellie's <laughs> totally tough. And then you got Jacob. He's a he's got a real identity. He knows who he is. I don't get it. You had done it before. Wide screen TVs, right? You've seen those. Let's get okay. it 35. Sucks. And he's got the confidence to be himself and do something, behave in front of the camera without worrying about the damn camera. Where are the bullets? Bets for the gun, not the bullets. Shit. Cut! Belly stop. Ah, uh, that doesn't do anything for the whole approach. <laughs> The way I got there, I think, is impressive. The sleeping gator? That's impressive. Obviously, when you're making a movie called Mud with a character like Mud, it's all about Mud. You never said your name. Mud. You can call me Mud. Mud? M-U-D. Matthew was Jeff's first choice from the start. Get a couple where it looks too wonky and dismount. I just hop back up and start hanging on that thing and just swing the tree boom off. Great. He and I have a similar sensibility about what we like about films. He's a linear thinker, logistics. If this changes, he's able to see how it changes other things, the tilt and the whole story. Got it. Like, you won't walk away to I hear you. Tape. You got it. He's stopping in between shots and adding up what he just shot and editing in his head. So he's making the movie as, he, as, he, as he's going. Hey, Matthew, just for kicks, we, we bend at the fire and let me see what it's held down looks like. Yeah, so here it going and it goes into what's going on, Ellis. Matthew's just, he's a good guy and um, we turned out to be really good friends. Oh, you're alive, that dog that doggone dummy. He really gets you excited on what you're doing. Action! He's got the physicality to him. Here's a guy that has no problem riding motorcycles, jumping off of boats and climbing up trees. Great. Cut. Run. He himself is always pumped up for a scene. It's really funny to watch him get into character. I mean, I might be able to get out quicker. I just feel like I was going. It was really an eye-opener to see and hear everything he's done and everything he's been through in movies, and he's a very good role model. First scene with Sam Shepard using a hydroscope on the water, pellet gun. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, I write parts for people. That doesn't mean I always get them to play the parts, but I start off with an idea. When I originally started writing this, Tom Blakenship's character, I'd, I'd actually written that with Sam Shepard in mind. You know, I'm a kid in college uh, dreaming about 
these people I want to work with, and then you wake up 10 years later and it's happening. It's a really heady experience. One of the most exciting moments on this film for me was um, getting the call from his agent. She kind of said, uh, this never happens. He said I would be honored to play Tom Blankenship and tell the writer don't change a word. Well, the script, you know, when I saw the script, I thought it was just amazing. One of the best scripts I've read in a long, long time. You know? Impeccable writing, you know, the scenes and the language and everything. And I, I love the character, too. It's, it's kind of crazy because he'll be Sam Shepard one minute and then, all right, roll camera, and then he's, and then he's just a totally different person, and it's, and it's really cool. Cut. Well, whenever I sit down to write, um, I, I try and focus on two things. Obviously, there's plot. You know, there's what happens. Characters move from point A to point B to C, and stuff happens. Um, but then there's uh, always a, uh, I try and attach the stories to like a central idea or emotion. That's good news. That's real good news. You know you're out here? No. For Mud, it's all about love. And if I had to pick a type of love, I would say this is maybe unrequited love is the closest thing to it. When you're looking up, because y'all love each other. The core of the movie is this young man's discovery of love and there's a lot to be learned when you're 14 years old and you fall in love for the first time and your parents are splitting up and you, know, and you have a lot of information come your way and I think it's about what is romantic love. It's about the dream of what that can be but it also shows the reality of what that is when it doesn't work out. I like complicated material. I like messy stories that are like life. Stories that leave you satisfied in the moment but keep you thinking. Is she okay? It's a relationship that's discussed between lots of different people but not between the two people who are having the relationship. So you're kind of left to figure it out for yourself because most relationships, I would say, are indecipherable. Action! Four weeks in, halfway through the production, we were like, wow, we shot this movie, this is great. And then we just kept reminding ourselves of what was left. Like, we still have to do the boat in the tree, and then we have a whole shootout scene. <laughs> the scope of it has been the biggest hurdle, but it's also been the most kind of thrilling part of it, because you've always got this something cool around the corner to do. I'm looking forward to riding the dirt bike, uh, getting in fights. <laughs> you liar! Making two kids run around doing all the work because you're too scared to do it yourself? I'm looking forward to seeing him getting punched. It's going to be pretty intense. I think it's going to look good. Cow! Don't be cow! Well, let's think about it. I mean, you got kids and water and stunts and snakes. You're not scared of snakes? Um, not, not really. They're, they're, they're tame. They're tame. You just got to do it. It's going to be the greatest snake scene since Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> 112 snakes all over my body. 100 water snakes, 12 king snakes, I think. B Mark, everybody's rolling. Ty, you set. Action snakes. I called Ty up and said, How do you feel about snakes? He goes, Oh, I love snakes. I said, How do you feel about snakes being on you? He said, Ah, cool. Can I do that? Have you seen snakes on a plane? Um, no. Have yeah, you seen on snakes me. on Ty? I have. And it was awesome. And then it smelled bad? They smelled horrible. Like a fart? Like. They were fart snakes? In order to be true to this story, um, you need to be true to its place, to its sense of place. So we've come to kind of the wilds of Arkansas to film this movie. Arkansas is amazing, you know, and we fought really hard to get this film in Arkansas. It would have been easier um, in a lot of ways to take this film to Louisiana or someplace with a huge tax incentive and established crew base and everything else, but I grew up in Little Rock. When I was writing this film, I wrote it for this exact place. It was really, really important for me to shoot this here. Arkansas is an amazingly varied place and, you know, has extraordinary cities and culture, but it also has some very out-of-the-way places that take a very, very long time to get to. You drive down a road, then you get to a gravel road. And then you take a gravel road for about 30 minutes, and then you get to a mud road, and then you get in like a, a gator, like a four-wheel gator, and then you ride about 15 minutes, and then we put you on a boat. This is our morning commute. It's a nice, quiet ride. 
but then you get there and it's like, ah, oh, there's a reason we're, we came all this way. This is, I haven't seen this on a movie before. I haven't seen this landscape, this river, this tree that looks like it was grown to hold a boat. It's thrilling. We're spending all this time underwater, you know, with a big tank on your head, you know. It's very beautiful, actually. I mean, we certainly didn't make it easy on ourselves. Have we ever heard of changing film quite like this? I've, I've never put my hands in the back on a floating piece of wood and in a river in rural Arkansas, I can tell you that. A major character of the, of, of the movie is, is the setting, and, uh, and it's hard to build the Mississippi River. So uh, I, I think you know, Jeff documents a world that uh, continues to change. I think that people will walk away from this film feeling they entered a world they didn't know much about and they left knowing a lot more. It's a fascinating world. There's something magical about it. I can't imagine capturing these things any other place. Oh, you got it inside. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What did you do differently? Yeah, baby. Whoa. That was good.